And welcome back to the Northeast Florida Surf Fishing Forecast. This video was shot Monday in Jack's Beach next to the Jacksonville Beach Pier. It's short and sweet. As you can see, the water is mud. Yoo-hoo colored salt water chocolate milk, guys. And uh, hopefully that's going to change. We'll get to talk about that. Uh, just keep watching. So the water in uh, Jack's Beach got absolutely filthy, guys. Uh, my goodness, it was blowing uh, south, southeast, up to 20 to 25 miles an hour late Monday afternoon. And if you've been following our channel for any time, uh, you know what we say about the south wind. It uh, gets it dirty. So next few days, if you're looking for clean water, you need to probably head to either Fort George down the crit. Well, let's stick to the north part, Fort George. Check out Little Talbot. Oh, I heard that was dirty as well. Huguenot Park, possibly. Heard that was a little bit murky from this south wind. And uh, if you're heading down south, Crescent Beach area, just got to look for it. Find the clean water if you can find it. If not, then uh, be prepared to catch plenty of sharks, catfish, and stingrays. Right now, we're looking at winds the next few days. Um, Tuesday, they're calling for southwest 10 to 12 in the morning and southeast in the afternoon again, 10 to 17 miles an hour. Could probably be a little bit stronger than that. And on Wednesday, west 10 to 20. And then on Thursday, west in the morning, they're saying like eight, saying like eight to 12 miles an hour and then switching over northwest, north, somewhere in that but not strong. I guess there's a front coming through, so we may see some rain Thursday afternoon. So honestly, the water will probably be dirty the next three days. Uh, we'll get a video up tomorrow afternoon for sure so we can show you guys if there's any progress. Uh, if the wind on Tuesday blows southeast, say five to 10, it'll actually clean up the water. But uh, what happens usually in the afternoons, it'll start off southeast and you'll start to see a clean line approaching the beach. And then later in the afternoon, it always switch o switches over more to the south, southeast. When the pier was open, we would have dirty water in the morning. A lot of times the wind would switch to the southeast and it would automatically, uh, within an hour or two, start cleaning up and we'd start catching trout, drum, reds, pompano. Then around five o'clock, four, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, the wind would switch more to the south and within 20 minutes in shallow, the water's complete mud. Like I said, I hate the south wind, uh, not my favorite. But other than that, the fishing has been pretty good the last few days. Uh, pompano, some nice whiting, black drum, redfish, Spanish mackerel, bluefish, speckled trout are all cruising the surf right now. Pompano seem to be hitting the sand fleas really good. Crab knuckles and clam tipped with uh, fish bites, the coquina flavor. Whiting are hitting clam, shrimp, sand fleas. The drum are hitting shrimp and sand fleas as well. And they'll hit a clam, they'll hit clam too, guys. And they'll hit crab knuckles, same with the redfish. Spanish, if you can find clean water, throw a gotcha plug, diamond jig, or a spoon. They work well. The uh, bluefish, same thing. The, although a bluefish won't have any qualms with hitting a pompano rig with shrimp or even fish bites. Bluefish aren't picky, guys. If it has color and it moves, they'll eat it. And the uh, trout... They're catching them up and down uh, the beaches here. They're showing up. As you know, usually this time of year around the full moon, they come in shallow to spawn. They'll hit live shrimp, they'll hit finger mullet, they'll hit topwater lures, and even uh, like DOA shrimp and stuff. The Volano rocks, Huguenot rocks, Millie Island rocks, all of those, anywhere where there's structure, those trout will be. So look for action early in the morning. Though I will say when it gets dirty like this, it definitely makes it more difficult the Jackson ladyfish will also be there, so it's fun when the water's clean and you find a school of trout, you'll have a, a good bite. 
as you know, in the river, it's same thing. When you find a school, you can sit there for hours and uh, just catch and catch and catch. But guys, remember, the limit is five now, and you can only keep one over 19 inches. Same with the bluefish, three per person, 12 inches to the fork. And flounder, five. Five. Remember, I think it was last year, 10. Well, now it's five, and they have to be 14 inches and over, which I actually like the 14 inch rule because a lot of the 12 inch flounder I've seen kept over the years, if you hold them up to the light, you can see right through them. So the uh, water temperatures right now, Flagler Beach Pier, 76. Jack's Beach around the Jack's Beach Pier, 74, and then Fernandina, 73. So water has definitely warmed. All the fish are, should be here. And uh, I expect any day now from the Flagler Pier to hear the first kingfish caught, if it hasn't already been caught. Once you hit about 73, 74, they'll be there. Although in the Jack Speech area, I have not seen any pogies late, lately. I saw a school a few months ago. I mean, that's how long ago and there weren't kings around then. But the minute we start seeing the, the schools of pogies off the beach, if you got a kayak and you want to catch a king off the beach, that would be the time I suggest, uh, as you know, we get a lot of west wind in the warmer months, first thing in the morning, and then it'll switch over to the southeast in the afternoon. So if you're in a kayak, you wanna hit it early on that west wind where it's flat and smooth. You'll still have swells, but they'll be smooth because once that sea breeze kicks in, swell picks up a lot more chop, a lot more current. And uh, if you're not an experienced kayaker, you don't really wanna be out in that. Also, we're looking at May 22nd, so three weeks from now. That's about the only weekend I have open this month, and I think the sinker guy will be helping out as well for the next seminar in Jack's Beach. As of right now, we got about 60 people who said they would come. So if you're watching this and haven't joined our Facebook group, you wouldn't know about us asking about the next seminar. So if you're not on the Facebook group, app or whatever and not on the group leave a response in the comments to this video we're just trying to gauge how many people are coming so we can pick the right venue make sure there's plenty of parking but uh that's all i got the next few days just look for clean water guys so i can tell you if, if you can't find it check the inlets we'll post a uh on youtube there's a way you know what you can just post pictures I'll post a few different uh, links to cameras you can uh, actually live stream and see what the water looks like. That's a tremendous help. And also, Sandy Van, she is the crane operator at the Jack Speech Pier, so she's the one who's helping rebuild it. She has said she will help us out as well by uh, letting us know how the water looks from up above, that bird's eye view. Sometimes when you're even with it, it might look clean, you know, a little sandy, but as when the pier was open, when you're looking down, you can tell real fast how clean it is. So she's going to help out and that'll be greatly appreciated. But if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Join our Facebook page if you haven't. We average about 20 or 30 posts a day on there with people all up and down the Northeast Florida area, giving the reports of what's biting, how the water looks, what they're biting on, and uh, and a lot of helpful information that's for the everyday surf fishermen, guys. And if you haven't joined our YouTube page, hit the subscribe button. It would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, tight lines.